Are you tired of detecting only potted plants? Do you need to detect special classes that your network isn't trained on? Before you start training your own network, check out our Eclipse Zero Shot Classification app. I'm Gilad Naho, Halo's Makers and Developers Community Leader. I'm excited to introduce our Clip based application, a game-changing tool for makers. This app allows you to classify new objects without the need to retrain your network, all by using a simple text prompt. Clip is a multi-model framework capable of processing both image and text input, aligning them into a shared embedding space. This enables direct comparison between images and text. Our Clip application runs zero-shot classification, meaning it can classify objects it has never been explicitly trained on. In the demo you're about to see, using the default setup from our GitHub repository, we will classify various objects I found around the office, moving from the easiest to the most challenging. The only inputs to the application are the text descriptions you will see in the GUI. No retraining was involved. Let's jump into the Pi and check out the demo. Okay, so I switched to my Ubuntu machine to use the XWin info tool. This tool allows me to capture the X window ID and use it as an input for our application. This step will help set up a few things in advance. Once you have the window ID, you can run the clip application with it. Now, with the clip application running, you can see the selected window being used as an input. Let's go over the UI elements. The threshold slider. This slider adjusts the classification threshold. Any classification with probabilities lower than the set threshold will be ignored. Negative checkbox. When checked, this option marks detections as negative prompts. Although included in the softmax calculation, it will not be qualified as a detection. We will explore how this feature works later. Ensemble checkbox. This enables ensemble mode, as described in the original clip paper. In this mode, the prompt text embedding is calculated with multiple variations to improve classification accuracy. For example, a prompt like a photo of a dog would generate an average embedding between variations such as a photo of a dog, a photo of a small dog, and a photo of my dog, etc. This can improve accuracy in some cases. You can view the ensemble template details in the text image matcher file. Text description. This is the text input for classification, used to describe the object you want to detect. Prompt prefix. This is set by default to a photo of a. It is recommended by the clip paper and generally improves accuracy. For example, using a photo of a person often yields better results than just a person. Keep in mind that most of the original captions and images used for clip were sourced from the internet, so a photo of a person is more common in the dataset than just a person. Probability bars. These display the real-time probability scores for each classification. Load and save buttons. These buttons allow you to save and load text embeddings to and from a JSON file. Track ID. This is used in the person detection mode, which we will review later. It helps mapping specific track IDs to the probability bars. Quit button. Closes the application. Now that we've covered the UI, let's move on to some prompting tips. Let's go over some usage examples and prompt tips. We'll start by adding a simple prompt. 
As you can see, in real time, the text is embedded and compared to the input image. For instance, we have 100% probability that this is indeed a dog. Let's also try adding cat and mouse as prompts. We still get very high probability for dog, and classifying cat or mouse also works perfectly. But what happens if we introduce a class that isn't part of the provided prompts? In this case, the best match will be selected, and it's not always what you expect. For example, as you can see here, an elephant falls somewhere between a dog and a mouse. We use softmax on the model outputs to amplify the higher scores and suppress the lower ones. This helps stabilizing the thresholding process. However, it's still not a perfect solution. Notice that when I move the input image slightly, small changes in the image cause drastic changes in the output. This instability doesn't happen when we're trying to classify an object that has a matching prompt, for example, mouse in this case. This is because it has much higher similarity score compared to dog or cat, and the softmax we use ensures that its score remains stable. To conclude, one of the main challenges is the absence of a background class. The way to counter this is by adding a general negative class. Its role is to act as a default match, which will get the highest probability if no positive prompts are detected. A good example of a negative class here might be animal. Now, you can see that the animal class takes most of the probability, and small changes in the input don't affect the output as much. If we mark it as a negative example, the results are pretty stable. And of course, we still detect the mouse and the cat. But what if there isn't an animal in the frame? The probabilities become unstable again, and the threshold becomes highly sensitive to small changes. This happens because the animal negative prompt isn't general enough. In this specific case, I would use something like computer screen, since that's what we are mirroring here. So, by adding a negative prompt for computer screen, our classification become much more stable. Let's switch now to the person detection mode. To enable it, we will add a detector flag with the person mode. Additionally, we will use a JSON file to save our work. In the person detection mode, we first run a person detection on the frame. Each detection is then sent for classification using the CLIP network. This allows us to implement detection rather than just classification. We also support a phase detector mode, and in the future we might add more general detectors. Let's try detecting the man in the green suit. As you can see, everyone is classified as a man in a green suit. This is not surprising because that's the only option we provided. Good background negative prompts for the person detector mode would be man and woman. Okay, so this looks much better. Now we're left with only two people, both wearing suits. Let's use the track ID feature to check the probabilities for the man with track ID number 5. Now the probability bars show the real time probabilities for object number 5. We can see that the text embedding for a man in a green suit is more similar to the image embeddings than the text embedding for simply a man. This isn't very surprising since in both images the man is wearing a suit. To fine tune our classification, we need to add additional negative prompts. This time we aim for a prompt that is very similar to our positive prompt but with a small change that allows the model to detect only the specific attributes we want. Ok, as you can see, we've added a man in a blue suit, a man in a white suit, and a man in a red suit. These added embeddings are similar to the man in a green suit, in the man and the suit dimensions, but they differ in the color dimension. This reduces the probability of a man in a green suit. 
Now we can adjust the threshold and get a more stable solution. So, another use case for negative prompts is to help your application fine-tune classification by adding a similar but slightly modified prompt with small changes in the specific attributes you want to detect. After adding more similar embeddings around your positive prompt, you should fine-tune the threshold to achieve a stable configuration. Let's save our configuration and exit the application. Now, let's restart the application using the same JSON file we saved. If we don't need to change the classification in real time for our final application, we can disable runtime prompts. This means the text embedding model will not be loaded and the application will load much faster with a lower memory footprint. So, we're set to go and everything is working. As you can see, our man in green suit has a very high probability, while the other individual does not. Keep in mind that since we disabled the runtime prompts, we cannot change them in real time. Thank you for watching the entire video. For a real use case of Clip running on the Network Optics video management system, check the link in the description. This video is part of our video management system webinar, which is available in our developer zone. I'm excited to see the ideas and projects you will come up with for this application. Got a cool idea? Please share it in the comments. Already implemented something and want to share it with the community? Add it to our community site under Community Projects. What would you like to see next? We are currently working on a Freegate integration, so stay tuned for updates. If you would like us to keep making videos, please like and subscribe. See you next time.